Hi, my name is Deb Samuels, and today we're going to make kabocha no nimono, which is a simmered pumpkin. And uh, the Japanese word for pumpkin is kabocha. And as you can see, it is quite different than the pumpkins that we're familiar with here. It does look like a buttercup uh, squash, uh, and it's very similar in taste and texture. But buttercup squash has a lot more liquid to it. Um, so I do like to use the kabocha. It's very intense flavor and you get a really delicious um, meat. It's a very tough squash, so I've made my slit initially. And there we go. And you can see the beautiful orange color on the inside. And just like any other pumpkin, you have to remove the seeds. And I usually try to keep some kind of a bowl at my uh, cutting board so that I'm not running back and forth between the garbage can and the cutting board. So you want to scrape out this just as you'd scrape out a pumpkin for Halloween and get out the strings. And now we're ready to cut it. Okay, put this off on the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually leave the skin on. Uh, one of the reasons that you do that is because the pumpkin will stay together a little bit better. We're going to be cutting it into about two inch chunks. And it's always easier to cut things when you have a flat surface. So I'm not going to try and cut my pumpkin like this. I'm going to set it down on its side and I'm going to make, it doesn't have to be even. As a matter of fact, it's better that it's not. It's more interesting on the plate. But this is about the size that you're going to make. So now it's all done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in. It's a cold start. So it's going to go right into my pot. Uh, as you can see, this pot is a little bit different um, than what you would see. This is a Japanese pot that I bought in Japan. And uh, the bottom is, has little indentations. Uh, in it, and that helps the sauce to cook all the way around the vegetables and underneath. Okay, so it's a little bit small, so I'm just going to put in enough to fit in one layer, and I'm going to turn on the heat, and now I'm going to add my seasonings sugar. Sake, around like this, and just make sure it goes in. I could have added that first, but there we go. And now the next secret to simmering Japanese vegetables and getting all the flavor to stay in is that the Japanese use something called a drop lid. It's usually made, it's not usually, it's always made of wood. And as you can see, it's a couple of centimeters smaller in diameter than the actual pot itself. And a drop lid means you're dropping the lid directly on the food. Um, and what this does is that it keeps all of the sauces that are going to be bubbling around this dish, uh, bubbling around, in, back into the vegetables itself. So that is a drop lid. If you don't happen to have a wooden drop lid in your cabinet, um, you can use a piece of parchment paper. Same concept. You cut a circle slightly smaller than the diameter of your pot, and you just let it go. Um, the temperature here is about medium high. It's very important in Japanese uh, cooking. You're cooking things rather at a high temperature for a shorter period of time. Um, we are going to let this simmer for 10 minutes, and then after that, it will be almost ready, and that's when we will add our soy sauce. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and I think the pumpkin is now just about ready for me to add the soy sauce. I'm gonna take a skewer, and if it goes through easily, which it does, uh, pumpkin is soft and ready, and now, the final seasoning, which is soy sauce. Okay. And as you can see, the liquid has almost disappeared. 
Um, and then just a final little dash of salt. This is my uh, little Japanese uh, eggplant. I keep uh, my salt in there. As you can see, I like purple. And that. All right. Cover goes back on. And in two minutes, we will have our pumpkin. Well, our pumpkin is done. And as you can see, the liquid really does uh, cook down into a beautiful little sweet glaze. And I'm just going to finish off my pumpkin by putting a little bit of that glaze on each piece. But all that goodness and sweetness from the sugar and the sake and the saltiness from the soy sauce is already in there. So there's your kabocha no nimono, and I hope you'll try this in your kitchen.